Okay, this is a quick tour of your power supply. Um, I'll just run through it briefly and say where I would point out where I think the failures are. But the first thing to do is, before you do anything with any power supply when you take it out, is discharge this capacitor. If you just Google discharge capacitor, you'll find a number of ways. The way I do it is I have a bulb that I have two wires on, put it across it, and then check voltmeter to make sure it has been discharged. Okay, that out of the way. Let's just have a quick look at the different sections. Okay, well, first of all, what's the purpose of this switching power supply right here. The purpose of this is to take AC240 from the mains and convert that to smaller DC voltages. So we'll have a 12 volt, a 5 volt standby, a 3.3 volt, maybe a 1.2 volt coming out of here and feeding the uh, main board, or main board, video board, whatever you want to call it. Okay, the board that this plugs into. This section over here we uh, use to power the CCFL bulbs that are in the uh, backlighting on the PC. Well, I pretty much ignore this just for this, but that's what this section here does. Okay, okay. So the first part of this is where the AC comes in. It goes through this uh, fuse right here, and eventually makes its way down to the bridge rectifier. So it's converted from AC to DC for the first time. Okay, so what? This section here is what they call EMI filtering. This stops you um, contaminating the mains with any high frequency signals, and it stops the mains from contaminating your uh, circuit here if there was big motors or something like that on on the, the house mains for whatever reason and um, this will filter out any uh, high frequency interference that could be caused by that now this bridge rectifier takes that 240 ac converts it to 320 dc and that dc sits across this capacitor here which is why this part here is dangerous okay so that's the first uh, part of the circuit. You should have 320 DC across that when it's plugged in. The next part of it is switching that on and off at very high frequency. Now that's accommodated through two chips really. You have a number of biasing components here but you have, I think this is the pulse width modulation chip, it could well be on the back of it but there is what's called a pulse width modulation chip on this board. That pulse width modulation chip is used to trigger the gate of the MOSFET which is the power MOSFET here. You see that's a G there, that's the gate. So what the idea is that by applying a small voltage to this you switch on the drain and source part of this. So it's essentially like turning on and off a light switch but instead of your finger pressing it on and off you switching on the gate turns this on and off very quickly. Now turning that on and off very quickly is used to uh, cause uh, inductance uh, across the transformer. Uh, obviously a transformer doesn't work with DC so this 320 DC has to be uh, pulsated. That AC signal is very very high frequency and that's fed into the transformer. The transformer then uh, changes that to lower AC voltages which come out the far side of this and from there that high frequency AC is then rectified as they call it. Rectified is converting from AC to DC. Is rectified uh, to using these diodes here. So once that's rectified there uh, you then have output DC voltages across here. Uh, there would be probably the higher, they're probably the 12 volt ones. I'm not sure if that's for a 5 volt or something. Um, but the idea is that you then are left with very, very stable DC voltages out here. Okay, so that's a quick breakdown of uh, where it is. Sorry, there's a feedback circuit here as well. So that's an optocoupler. That's probably a TL431. But this takes a sample of the output voltage and feeds it back to the pulse width modulation chip. So it can know what the, it knows what the draw is on this and it can know to increase or decrease the pulse width modulation to control how much uh, power uh, is required. So where would I look? The first thing I normally do is check the fuse obviously which you've done. Uh, when I also do this little check where I check the positive pin that it goes to one of the center pins of the uh, bridge rectifier here which is this chip here and at the other pit uh, the negative pin goes to the other center pin of the bridge rectifier that's just basically a continuity test because I've had problems where the induction coil has gone or where the fuse has gone um, and that's just basically a continuity check to check for there once that's done another check I do is I plug it in for a second then plug it out and I check to see is there any voltage across this if there's no voltage on it uh, you can basically assume that there's pretty much an open somewhere here okay another check to do is this is the power MOSFET which is under a lot of stress and this component can frequently fail so with the power off and the capacitor here discharged you could uh, check to see if this is shorted Okay, also check the electrolytic capacitors.